Oh, hi. I am so excited this morning because I have two chocolate bars and I'm going to eat them both. So let's empty them out on the table and then I'm going to eat both of the chocolate bars. Okay, well, as you can see, there's a problem because I had, I thought I had two bars of chocolate, but clearly one of them is missing some chocolate. You know, this bar over here has two, four, six, eight, ten, ten pieces in it, but this bar has less than ten. It has two, four, six, seven. Well, sounds like an improper fraction. Or is it a mixed fraction? I, okay, now, now I can't figure out if I should be thinking of this as an improper fraction or a mixed fraction. Are they the same thing? How do I change one into the other? Okay, now I've got two problems. Number one, I've, I'm missing chocolate. And number two, I don't even know how to represent the amount of chocolate I have as a fraction. I think it's time to do some learning. The main idea that I want to get across to you today is that you can represent the same thing with a mixed fraction or an improper fraction. They can represent the same idea. And so I wanted to start with chocolate pies because I'd just been looking at chocolate on the table and now I'm just really craving chocolate. Did you know there was such thing as chocolate pies? I didn't. It's amazing. I discovered something new. Chocolate pies. And as you can see, I ate four slices of one of the chocolate pies because I was so into chocolate. Anyway, let's take a look at how we can turn this uh, set of chocolate pies into a mixed fraction. So remember, a mixed fraction has a whole number and then the parts. So let's start by looking at how many whole chocolate pies are there. One, two. Two whole chocolate pies. So for our mixed fraction, we're going to write two. Then what about for our parts? Well, our parts are fractions, and the fraction needs a fraction line, so whoop. Now looking at the furthest pie on the right, you can see that it's not all there, because I ate some of it. What's left? Well, there's one slice left. But how many slices would there have been if I hadn't eaten them all? That's the denominator, right? How many equal parts would there be in the whole? Hmm, well, I can see one, two, three, four. There would be four equal pieces, so four. So how many pies are there left? It is a mixed fraction. It's two and one fourth, or two and one quarter. But what about as an improper fraction? Well, for the improper fractions, we want to start again with our fraction line. And then we want to count for the denominator how many parts are there in a whole for a single pie. Well, one, two, three, four. And then the question is, how many pieces are there left? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine pieces left. So nine fourths. But whether you write it as two and one fourth or nine fourths, it's actually the same thing. And you know it's the same thing because I made both of these numbers based on what was in the picture. Let's take a look at a different example. Here are the new Hershey bars, and as you can see Hershey is putting an emoji on their chocolate pieces, which is kind of cool. And this mouse thought it was kind of cool too because he ate some of my chocolate. Oh. Uh, not happy with you, Mouse. Anyways, it provides a good example of a mixed fraction, so let's go ahead. Let's start with counting our holes. One, two, three. There are three whole chocolate bars, so we write the number three. Then what about our fraction part? Well, as we can see, there is a chocolate bar that is missing some chocolate, thanks to the mouse. So for that one, we need to draw the fraction line, and then we need to figure out what the numerator and the denominator are. Let's start with the numerator. How many pieces are there left in that uh, partially eaten chocolate bar? Well, we can count three, six, seven, eight. Eight pieces. But how many pieces would there have been? Well, there are two ways you can do this. You can either imagine it based on taking a look at what's missing, or you can look at the other chocolate bars. 
Uh, looking at the other chocolate bars, I can see 3, 6, 9, 12 pieces in each whole chocolate bar. Or again, I could draw some imaginary lines and imagine what a whole chocolate bar would be. Either way, there are 12 pieces in a whole chocolate bar, so that's the denominator, 12. The mixed fraction then is 3 and 8 twelfths. What about the improper fraction? Well, let's get rid of that. In the improper fraction, again, we need to start with our fraction line. And for the denominator, we want to say how many parts are in the whole. Uh, we just answered that question, so we know it's 12. What about the numerator? Well, for the numerator, we need to count how many pieces there are all together. That's going to be a little bit difficult because we need to count by 12s. If you don't know how to count by 12s, then you'd have to do it the old-fashioned way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. 44 pieces. Or you could count by 12s. Anyways, uh, the improper fraction is 44 twelfths. And as I said before, we know that these are equal because they're both based on the same picture. One more example. Toblerones. And again, oh, I love Toblerones so much, but that mouse has been eating my chocolate. Oh, well. Let's start with how many holes we have for our mixed fraction. One, two, three. There are three whole Toblerone bars, so three for our holes. And then how many for the parts? Well, that's pretty easy. We just need to take a look at what's going on over here in the part where the mouse has eaten the chocolate bar. Mm. Let's see, how many, how many pieces are there left? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pieces. And how many would there have been? Well, we can just look at the other whole chocolate bars to figure that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine pieces in a whole Toblerone bar, so nine. For the denominator, three and six ninths. How would we write that as an improper fraction? Well, we have to start with our fraction line. And again, the number at the denominator is how many pieces are there in a whole chocolate bar? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine pieces in a whole chocolate bar. And then the numerator for an improper fraction is how many pieces are there all together? Well, we know we can count by nines, so nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. So thirty-three ninths. And again, these are equal. It's based on the same picture, so we know they're equal. And I'm wondering, is there anything that you notice that is the same about the mixed fractions and the improper fractions we've been looking at? One thing that I noticed is that they will still have the same denominator. And they'll have the same denominator because the denominator tells you how many pieces are there in a whole. And regardless of how you're showing the fraction, there are still the same number of pieces in a whole. The only difference is, with the improper fraction, we take all the pieces and stick them on the top, whereas with the mixed fraction, we only have, we take all those overflow pieces, all those extra pieces that shouldn't be there, write it as a whole number, and then only write the parts. So I guess the big question we should be asking now is, how do you convert mixed fractions to improper fractions? Well, one way to do it is to just draw a picture and then use the picture to convert it into the other one. So you could draw a picture of a mixed fraction and then use the picture to convert it into an improper fraction. Here's an example. I have the number 2 and 3 fourths, or 2 and 3 quarters. So let's start by drawing our holes. 1, 2, those are our holes. So let's color them in. And then we need to deal with the 3 fourths. So let's draw another circle for the parts. Now we know that this is going to be divided into 4 equal parts, because that's what the denominator says, 4. So let's divide our circles into 4 equal parts. And now we need to deal with those extra bits from the numerator. The numerator is 3, so the extra circle needs to have 3 parts colored in. 
There we go. 2 and 3 fourths. Now, how do we do that as an improper fraction? Well, we start by drawing a fraction line. And then for the denominator, again, we write how many equal parts are there. And just like the mixed fraction, it's going to be the same. It's divided into four equal parts, so four. What about the numerator? The numerator is how many pieces there are. So let's count by fours. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. There are 11 pieces colored in, so 11 fourths, or 11 quarters. Now it's your turn. I've given you two fractions here, and I want you to grab a piece of paper and draw the circles just like I did to convert it into a picture, and then convert the picture into an improper fraction. Press pause to do it, and then press play when you're ready to check your answers. Welcome back. Let's check your answers. So the first one is 3 and 1 third. So how are we going to do that? First we draw our circles for the holes. 1, 2, 3, and color them in. Now we need to deal with our parts. So we draw an extra circle for the parts. And we can see that it's being divided into thirds, so let's divide them all into thirds. And how many thirds for the, for the last part? Uh, one third, so we're going to color in one piece. Now that we've drawn our fraction picture, we want to convert it into an improper fraction. So we know the denominator is going to be 3. What's the numerator going to be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 thirds. What about the one on the bottom? 2 and 5 sixths. Start by drawing the holes. 1, 2, 2 holes, color them in. And then we need to draw another circle for our parts. So what do we do now? We can see it's being divided into sixths. So divide the circles into six equal parts. And now for the parts, uh, how, many, how many extra bits do we need to do? Well, there are five sixths, so we need to color in five of these pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Now that we have our picture, we need to convert it into an improper fraction. So we know the denominator is going to be six. What's our numerator going to be? One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 sixths. What if we want to convert an improper fraction into a mixed fraction? Well, we just need to do the exact same thing, but in the reverse direction. Here's an example. The improper fraction is 11 fourths. So again, we're going to draw the picture before we convert it. How do we draw 11 fourths? Well, we just keep drawing circles until we've colored in 11 of those pieces. And remember, each circle is going to be divided into four equal pieces in this case. So let's do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now that we've drawn the picture, we can convert it into a mixed fraction. Let's start by counting the holes. How many whole circles are colored in? Two. So we write two. Now we need to do our parts. Fraction line. Whoop. Looking at the parts, we can see that there are three colored in. And the whole circle is divided into four equal pieces. Two and three fourths. Now it's your turn. I want you to use the drawing method to convert these improper fractions into mixed fractions. Press pause to do it on a piece of paper, and then when you're done, press play to check your answers. Welcome back. Let's see if you got it right. So, top question first. Seven thirds. Seven thirds. Let's draw it as a picture. So we're going to keep coloring thirds until we get to seven. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Seven. Now we need to convert it into a mixed fraction. How many holes are there? There are two whole circles, and then there's one third that's extra. So two and one third. Two and one third. Bottom question. It says 11 sixths, so we're just going to keep coloring in sixths until we get to 11 of them. So our circle is going to be divided into six equal parts. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 sixths. Lovely picture. Let's convert it. How many whole circles do we have? Well, this whole circle is colored in, so one. And then how many parts do we have? Well, there's this one over here. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five out of the six colored in, so one and five sixths. One and five sixths. And that's how you convert improper fractions into mixed fractions. Mm. Well, even though I don't get two full bars of chocolate, this is still pretty good. I want you to complete page 206 in your jump math book, and I'm going to keep eating some chocolate. Enjoy!